Hello and welcome. So with this question, we're working with a solo growth model. Uh, we're going to focus on like uh, applications of the diagram. So uh, and what we're going to see is the effect of a change in population growth rates on you know key uh, variables in the model. So uh, without further ado, the question asks the following: Many demographers predict that the United States will have zero population growth in the 21st century, in contrast to average population growth of about one percent per year uh, in the 20th century. Now use the SOLO model to forecast the effects of this slowdown in population growth on uh, you know, some key economic variables, so the, on the growth of total output, the growth of output per person, uh, also consider the effects on both the steady states and the transitions between steady states. So let's attack this thing piece by piece. So let's first off think about the, uh, the new um, steady state levels. So given a decrease in the growth rate, the population growth rate, that uh, cursive N, what is the effect going to be on per, per worker capital, per worker production, and per worker consumption? To answer that, let's turn to the diagram. And uh, for this dynamic diagram, I'm using uh, this thing from Wolfram Alpha, Wolfram Demonstration Project. So it's a nice little dynamic solo model. So you can see, uh, you know, given uh, this green line, which is the per Oh yeah, output per worker. Uh, you can see this blue line, which is the break-even investment. So that's the uh, depreciation. Um, that's capital times depreciation plus um, uh, the growth rate of population plus the growth rate of technology. And then this uh, this red cursive line here is uh, investment. So the savings rate times per worker production. Uh, where the break-even investment line intersects the um, investment line, it, we find our steady state level of per worker capital. So that's a K star. Uh, and that also gives us, by following it up to per worker um, production, we find the steady state level of uh, output per worker, which is at this point that I'm pointing at right there. So what happens if we decrease the labor force growth rate? Well, what we find is that that shifts down the blue line, you know, that depreciation line, the depreciation plus uh, population growth rate plus technology growth rate, which pushes out per worker capital, uh, and it similarly pushes up and out um, per the steady state level of per worker production. So given that decrease in population growth rate, the capital available to each worker is going to increase. So we can include the following. Per worker capital increased, per worker production increased, and uh, because per worker production increased, nothing has changed. That also implies that per worker consumption increased. Okay, what about total output, though? Um, well, total output grows at rate n. That is, um, in the city state, total output is going to grow at that rate n that we just decreased. So because the rate n is decreasing, that means total production is going to decrease. So even though output per worker has increased, given this decrease in population growth, we can conclude that total production is going to decrease. OK, what about transition dynamics? So we had two conclusions when thinking about the steady state level. One was that uh, this steady state level of capital, you know, it's a really per worker production, per worker consumption, all of those things have increased to a new, um, uh, these all have, are going to transition to a higher level of growth, right? However, total output is going to uh, decrease. It's going to transition to a lower level of growth. So remember that per worker production grows at rate G. That's the growth rate of the population. Actually, sorry. Uh, that's the growth rate of technology. So uh, worker per worker production, this lowercase y, is already just growing at rate g. Rate g hasn't changed at all, right? We were manipulating n, the population growth rate. So just for the sake of ease, let's assume that uh, population, let's assume that technology growth is zero. So before we had um, uh, per worker production, this ln y star sub one, that's what we started off before. And then at this date right here, we had uh, n, the growth rate of population, dropped down to zero. Um, so what we find is that we now jump up to that newer, higher level of uh, per worker capital, 
and at a higher level of per worker capital that we saw, we are going to have this new higher level of per worker production, this, uh, um, this uh, y star sub 2, this new level here. We probably don't even need the LNs. It's probably distracting you, isn't it? Awesome. So at this moment right here, we jump up to this new level growth path for per worker production. Um, and per worker production that's actually experienced by each worker isn't going to instantaneously jump up there. It's going to take some time as their capital accumulates, right? So that's per worker production transaction transition dynamics. Now let's look at total production transition dynamics. So total production grows at rate n plus g. Um, we're assuming that n was zero. Sorry, we're assuming that g, the growth rate of technology, was zero. So let's kind of grow, get rid of that. So normally it's n plus g, but uh, for the ease of this question, we're going to get rid of that. So total production normally grows at rate n. So uh, before we had our decrease in population growth, you had total production growing at this amount right here. So capital Y was growing at this rate here. We then, at this moment, we have um, population growth rate jump down to zero. Um, and so total production is not going to continue to grow at that high of rate anymore. Right? Total production is going to grow at rate n, which is zero. So there's this sum level here, zero. So total production is going to slowly decrease its production, its growth. Uh, down to, you know, no growth rate at all. In fact, that might be an instantaneous jump. Cool. So uh, we see that total production is going to decrease, right? Um, it's not growing, it's either not growing at a fastest rate it was before, or it's not growing at all. And per worker production is, um, you know, it's, it's not growing because the growth rate of per worker production is set by the growth rate of technology, but it's definitely jumping up to this new higher level of per worker production. So for a period of time it grows, and then it uh, settles down, it approaches at the limit, um, this new study site level of per worker production that's higher. Cool. Uh, hopefully that was helpful. Uh, let me know if you have any questions. Here's kind of a summary of all the transitions, right? So you had uh, delta plus n shift down to the new lower level, and you had uh, an initial per worker capital there, the new per worker capital there, and then uh, the, the initial lower level of per worker production, and then the higher level of per worker production. Um, so check out the video description for info on uh, useful things as well. Thanks and have a good day. Bye.